Hey everyone, it's Maria, and today I'm going to be doing a stocking stuffer video for you. I was talking with one of my girlfriends and she said, I really need you to tell me what to ask for for my kids for Christmas because otherwise I'm just gonna end up with a bunch of junk that I don't want. So I thought that would be a really good time for it because yes, it is that time of year. I started looking through my old videos for the last three years and I found a video of stocking stuffer ideas apparently that I had never posted. So I am sorry, my viewers from 2017, I never got to posting it, but I did film it. <laughs> so I wanted to go ahead and tell you what was on that list and then tell you if it was a good idea or not, because I don't know, maybe some of them weren't. So the first one that I wanted to show you are um, peg dolls. And these ones, actually, I didn't paint, although I have painted them before for people. I got these in a craft swap. This is Molly Weasley. We also have um, in here, here's another, here's a Slytherin. We have, I think Dobby's in here, yeah. Dobby. <laughs> uh, these actually are still a good idea. You can paint them to be any character from any book that your kid likes. They're great for younger kids. You can get them in different sizes. I know that they're also Matryoshka dolls if you feel really ambitious and want to go that round. I've I've actually done a Doctor Who set for my father-in-law one year. It was really fun to do, especially for Doctor Who. So if you kind of fancy yourself crafty or you could even give, give them to the person with the book and say, hey, why don't you paint your own if they're more artsy than you are or find an artist to do it. But you don't really have to be super over the top. These are pretty simple. Um, just use some Sharpie, some paint, maybe some felt and a hot glue gun. Uh, and those are actually a pretty good idea. Next one that I suggested was a game called Rat Attack Cat. And that actually came up several times in my filming videos that I was looking through. And it was fun because I actually got to see it not all battered up and used and beaten. <laughs> this is our, our current, um, our current Rat Attack Cat. It's pretty worn down. It's been taped several times, uh, However, it is still one of our favorite games. It's easy to travel. I don't know how many times I've taken this to a get together with kids, uh, but also adults can play it and it's not horrible. The art's kind of fun, very simple concept. You do not need to know how to read to do it. Uh, kids as young as two or three, we've, we've helped them out with this. It's pretty good. Basically the idea is you have four cards, you peek at the, the ones on the ends, you don't peek at the ones in the middle, and when you feel after drawing cards back and forth and switching them out that you have the lowest sum, then you hit the table and say red tack cat. And then everybody else has one more chance. So it's very simple to play. Super fun. It holds up. I mean, my sister and I have spent probably an hour playing this by ourselves because it's kind of addictive. <laughs> so it's a good one if you have parents with younger kids or middle age, not even middle age kids, but um, grandparents. It's just a really, really great gift for pretty much everybody. The next thing I suggested was Flux, and we have since expanded our Flux card collection. These are two of our favorites. This is my absolute favorite, Star Trek Next Generation Flux. I gave this to my husband last year, uh, but we have Chemistry Flux, we have Math Flux, we have Star Flux. And you can find a lot of fluxes on, <laughs> don't say that too fast or you get all jumbled up. But uh, basically the idea behind flux is it starts off with draw one, play one, and then the rules get more complicated as you play cards to change the rules and the objectives of the game. These are super fun, especially if you have somebody who's into something in particular. I know they have all different kinds of varieties. Very easy to fit in, but if you have a Trekkie, I mean, this one's really, 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 really good. So I recommend that one. The next thing I suggested was getting postcards. There are so many cute postcard sets available online. Um, some of my favorite ones are a uh, literary one. There's uh, Animalium does a really beautiful illustrated animal one. There's one that is the fat, salt, heat, um, oil. I don't know. I'm forgetting the fourth word. Um, but the cookbook that she does really pretty watercolor illustrations that those postcards are coming up pretty soon. So 
just if you know what they're into start just getting a postcard set because if they don't use them to send out to people they can also just have some beautiful art to kind of change out next one up was card line animals or timeline and we actually this is a card game we have several versions of although I'm not seeing any of them right now I didn't grab it out card line animals is basically they're animals and you can rank them by weight length and uh, lifespan and you kind of try and play as as many get rid of your four cards and not draw new ones if you play it correctly and put it in the right order very simple concept they also have globe trotters for people who are more into traveling they have timelines where it's just chronology so I really recommend that one if you want like a simple learning game but that can be approachable to anybody and a lot of them you don't know so even if you are a nature or geography buff like you're gonna learn something so the next thing on the list was a breakfast journal or a listography thing and these just are fun books um, I still really recommend uh, these ones I haven't filled them all out but they're kind of fun to have out I actually filled out more of this one than than other they just give you prompts of different lists that you can make um, and we also have a game to go with it that I actually really like the game <laughs> this is called listography the best Oh, may the best list win and there are three different kinds of cards you have to make uh, very simple rules to follow you can do this with a time limit or not if you have people who write slower like kids um, but this one it, it's a fun game if you enjoy making lists or journals this is a it's, it's kind of a fun intro game it's not hard to explain it at all the next one on the list is probably one of my favorite things just period and it is water brushes so you put the water in this up here and then squeeze it out onto your brush so these are great for nature journaling for I, I like to um, paint in my Bible at church so I take that there it's great if you are just uh, traveling and if you have anybody who's an artist and likes paint in any sort of way water brushes are great but the things to go with them that I really really love there's two and these things are some of my most prized possessions they hold up for a very long time they're a very good art supply uh, this these are ink tense watercolor pencils they work like watercolor pencils but then they dry like ink so when they, they don't reactivate and smear if they get wet but I just I have had this set for three and a half years and while I don't use them all absolutely all the time they hold up for a very 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 long time like I love them the other thing that is my favorite and I I've used more than my well probably yeah probably more than my ink tents by a smidge these are called peerless watercolors and they come in strips like this uh, they're actually made from plant dyes they used to use them to color tint pictures uh, a long time ago it's a company out of Wisconsin if I remember correctly and so when they came I kind of cut them into strips and then I just glued them onto just plain some cardstock I keep this in my purse you can see it's very well loved <laughs> and needs to get um, re reloaded on a few of the colors um, but the the sheets that come in are about yay thick so you can divide them out this has lasted me two and a half years something crazy like that it makes it possible for me to carry on 48 colors with me in this small of a thing in my purse in my like billfold thing uh, and I am eternally grateful <laughs> to the peerless watercolor company for allowing me to do that for travel journaling for nature journaling for doing journaling in my Bible at church I mean this this thing right here and I don't even know how many kids I've shown this to that are just like mesmerized it's high quality art supplies I think the bigger set that I got was $50 but again you can cut those into three and divvy them out to three different people if you'd like or you can just keep them and reload them in a couple years when you need to uh, it's definitely worth the, worth the investment. They do have smaller sets too, but this is probably one of the things I use most in my life. <laughs> so 
uh, yeah, that held up as a recommendation. So that is what I'm going to go ahead and recommend to you for stocking stuffers. I would also like to throw in two more. Who gives a crap toilet paper? I love this company. They don't use plastic to do their wrapping. It comes in a big 48 box. Uh, and I actually just ordered one, the gift edition. So it has a big box that has a to and from. And the ones for Christmas actually have written on there like a design. It's like a holiday design. It says to and from. So you can give them out to your mail people, to your favorite librarians. Um, it will say who gives a crap on it if you care about that, but I don't, I think it's great. Uh, we're getting ready to give them out. My middle child is going with my mother-in-law to the homeless shelter, uh, and they give out those. So we thought it would be fun to kind of jazz up the, the toilet paper giving this year. So I really recommend these. They're just kind of a fun gift for people. And then this, if you have somebody who shaves stainless steel razors, I am bringing them back because the Venus razors that I grew up in the nineties and early two thousands with like you have to replace those cartridges for so much money. The plastic's going in a landfill and they don't hold up. So I love these. I got a, I got one for my niece when she graduated high school. It actually, you can get a pack of a hundred blades for like 20 bucks. And then you don't have to replace blades for like two years. Uh, you can replace, you recycle them if you can find a place that'll do it. I have not yet, but I mean, come on people. Let's, Let's stop throwing the plastic away. So, Anyway, those are all my stocking stuffer ideas. I would love to hear in the comments what you think of any of them. And I will talk to you more later. Bye.